So this week, we learned that FBI investigators used facial recognition software to identify and charge a Reed College graduate accused of assaulting an ICE officer and damaging the ICE building in South Portland during a June protest. 24-year-old Robert Jacob Hopes was arrested last Friday. And this is not the first arrest made using this technology. And as it grows more sophisticated, it may not be the last. So we're diving into the deep end this morning about how law enforcement is using this technology. So joining us this morning is Atul Ingle, an assistant professor in, de in the Department of Computer Science at Portland State University. And, and I know one of your areas of expertise is computer vision. That's a field of artificial intelligence that allows computers to see and interpret images or video. So thank you so much for being here, Atul. We really appreciate your expertise. Thank you for having me. Of course. Okay, so first, can you explain how computer vision works and specifically the way that law enforcement is using it? Yeah, so the way these uh, facial recognition systems work these days is that they are big black box models. They are huge, what are called deep neural networks that are trained on uh, millions, if not billions of images. So they basically construct uh, essentially these internal fingerprints, if you will, for all every different face that uh, is presented to to this model and uh, when you find a new uh, picture that you want to figure out whether it's in 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 this database or not you basically feed it through the trained model and then if there's a match then it says okay yeah i found a picture that seems to match this image um and uh, the the thing with these uh, commercially available systems that uh, law enforcement uh, uses, there's not that much information available about mm. exactly how they're doing it, right? So uh, these are proprietary systems, uh, and uh, there's very little publicly available information, and that's where there is a difference between how people in academia like me work on these systems, whereas uh, for-profit companies work on these systems in a more secretive manner. Interesting. So do you have any idea how the FBI used the facial recognition in this Reed College arrest specifically? Do you have any idea? Uh, in this specific case, I have no idea, hmm. uh, but I can give you just general broad strokes how these systems are used and they have been used in the past for law enforcement is uh, they basically go to one of these companies that designs these uh, neural network based models that are trained on billions of images and um, um, and they give them these images that they take from various places. For example, there are cameras now installed on basically every uh, street light, uh, every street intersection, uh, and they grab images from, from those cameras, and then they feed them through this model. And if there's a match, then they say, okay, yeah, there's a match. Mm -hmm. um, could I the ask other you, could concerning I ask you thing about... Yeah, okay, I was going to ask you how accurate yeah. uh, can this identify yeah. somebody and what the concerns are about the accuracy. Yeah, so I was I was going to say exactly answering that question is the, the, the one big concern with these systems is that because these are black boxes uh, and nobody knows exactly how they work and how they were trained and how many images they were trained on, uh, the, there is no publicly available data on how accurate they are. And that, again, is a difference between how these companies do their things and how academics like us, mm -hmm. we usually go and publish papers about this we make the models public, we publish all the data, we publish all the code so that anyone else can go ahead and test it, right? Uh, mm. And make it better, for example. Uh, but with uh, some of these models uh, that uh, law enforcement are using, if you look online, there's very little information available about them to start with. And then the information that you may find uh, is going to vary from anything from 80% to some people will say, oh, it's 100% oh, it's accurate, which mm -hmm. I don't think is true. Hmm. So would you say that most people's images are just are out there already in a database somewhere? And what could people do to protect their privacy if, if this is the case? Yeah, that unfortunately is true, is that if, uh, if you were ever out walking on a street, then your image is probably in some database somewhere, right? Because the uh, situation is that we are surrounded by cameras all around us, right? Uh, and uh, uh, there are cameras taking pictures uh, for various reasons. And so it's, it's, 
it's really hard to maintain privacy these days because we are just surrounded by cameras yeah. even if you don't have social media accounts or you never ever had a facebook account uh, there is a small chance that you maybe showed up in a photo that a friend of a friend took and posted mm. it on their facebook account and if that uh, that photo was publicly available without a Facebook login, then one of these facial recognition, recognition systems have most likely uh, used that, that photo as part of their training data set. Yeah. I'm sure that will be concerning to a lot of people. Uh, Professor Inglay, thank you so much for joining us this morning from Portland State University. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Of course.